Shakti Pods here, too. Okay, I better stop that now or we're never gonna stop. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start losing people and start passing out. Whew, my goodness. So that Shakti that you can feel, that Shakti that's coming off of those sacred words, Hari, Krishna, Radhe, the Shakti which is vibrating and pulsing between us now it's not coming from me it's not coming from you where is it coming from? Where is that Shakti arising from? What am I? Who am I? Where am I? <laughs> that Shakti is coming from the cause of causes, from the original absolute reality, which is not some vague and impersonal thing, but is a hologram of our own self. Rather, we are a hologram of it. A hologram contains the whole in the itty bitty pieces. Krishna, 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 Krishna. <laughs> hologram contains the whole in all of the pieces. So, we're a hologram of Vrindavan Dham. We're a hologram of Vrindavan, of the celestial forest abode of Krishna, Radha, and the gopis. Ourself is a hologram of that. We contain an image of the whole within ourself. Because like it says in the Sri Isopanishad, Ishopanishad invocation. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the exact words real quick. The Sri Ishopanishad invocation states, The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete. And because he is completely perfect, all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped and complete wholes. What is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself because he is the complete whole. Even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains in the complete balance. So when you feel that ecstasy, that love, it's because we are feeling the holographic equivalent of Vrindavan Dham, the holographic equivalent of the love between Krishna and Radha. because we partake of that holographic nature and it works from above to below and not the other way although there is a movement which goes that way the origination is above the cause of causes is above there's a wonderful verse in, in uh, some of Prabhupada's books which say that a subject is followed by its predicate a predicate it follows the subject in other words the manifestation arises out of the manifestor. Arrives, the manifestation which we see arises out of the cause of causes, the originator. The above is first and the below is next. The below receives energies from above. And vice versa, as that happens, there builds up this motion and movement in between the below and the above and the beloved, below and the above have reciprocation and this is the reciprocation of Radha and Krishna's love from the below and the above so when we feel that energy we're entering into a reciprocation with the absolute truth with the Karana Karanam, the prime cause of causes, Ishvar the supreme superior Godhead That superior Godhead is not some vague and personal thing. These energies and these feelings, are they impersonal? Is this ecstasy? Is this bhav? Is it something foreign? No, it's very, fam very familiar. It's very comfortable. It's very 
personal. What is the position of your eternal soul? Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, that word Chaitanya Charitamrita means the eternal position of the living force in immortality. Chaitanya Charitamrita, the position of the living force in immortality. What is that position? What could it possibly be? Well, what, do you, what would you like it to be? Would you like it to be sadness? Would you like it to be fear? Would you like it to be hatred? Would you like it to be anger? Those things can be permanent for you. You can become a ghost and live in fear. You can become a demon and live in anger and rage and, and, and envy. But why would you want to? We're so, you know, at least me, in meditation and stuff, I'm so convinced, so trained into thinking that emotions are, you know, just a, a part of our body and just not real and all this stuff. It's not, that's not truth. False emotions such as pride and jealousy and anger, those are not real because they arise out of ignorance. But the real rasas, the real bhav, those are not false. This spirit bhav means spiritual ecstasy. These aren't false. These aren't a product of the physical world. Ecstasy sure as hell didn't come from this world. Ecstasy came trickling down the Jamuna River in the form of a dancing boy and his consort, Radha. Came trickling down the Ganges, the stream of consciousness, stream of life, stream of soul. Because it originated up the river. It originated upon the high mountains of the Himalayas. The high mountains of the spiritual world. Trickling down and down and down and down and down. And we are the end result. The end result which is eternally juxtaposed against the prime cause, Krishna Radha. The living being partakes of, what is it, 55, 50, 50 of, of Krishna's qualities, something like this. The living being partakes of, of 50 of Krishna's qualities. So we are a holographic externalization of Vrindavan. Yet, Vrindavan, Gokul Vrindavan on the earth, and Goloka Vrindavan in the highest pinnacle of the spiritual sky is the same. As above, so below, as the Hermetic Axiom goes. Or even taking it a step further, the Kabbalistic Axiom says, Malkut is in Keter, and Keter is in Malkut. In other words, the highest sphere is within the small, the lowest sphere, and the lowest sphere is within the highest sphere. This is a relationship. And that relationship is Bhakti is the dancing movements of the gopis and Krishna as he plays his transcendental flute with seven chords you know seven notes and we are enticed by the beautiful blissful primordial vibrations and our bodies feel this uncontrollable Shakti, this uncontrollable swaying movement. You find yourself kind of swaying back and forth during kirtan. 
That is that movement between Krishna and the gopis, between the above and the below. All of Krishna's shaktis are invested in his various names. And through singing these names, we enter into that swinging, circling motion of energy between the above and the below. I mean, most people are not conducive to it, so they can't feel it. They're like covered in, in like a dirty filament that protects the, that prevents the electric charge from reaching the wire. But when you remove that filament, when you cleanse the dust from the mirror of mind through chanting in this way, you become conducive to the Shakti. And you become a living, breathing avatar of Vrindavan. You are nothing but Vrindavan, a reflection of Vrindavan, a hologram of Vrindavan. Yet Vrindavan is there. It has to be there. It's eternally juxtaposed against all of the living entities, serving as not only the end result, but the very beginning. There's a, a beautiful verse that my friend uh, Jim sent me yesterday, and it's from jo uh, Job 38.4-7. And it goes, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determines its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This is our original position. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. This is our original position. So how, how lucky are we to be able to be born directly after Krishna, directly after Chaitanya? I was watching this, uh, I forget what it was, but somebody was saying, even if you go to Tibet and you ask the Tibetans there, who is Krishna? They'll tell you he's the savior of mankind. Similarly to the Christians believe <laughs> Christ, <laughs> Krishna, Christians, same shit, except that Christ was a pure devotee, displaying all, displaying all of the qualities of Krishna. He had the prem of Krishna. He had the passion of Krishna, the devotion of Krishna. And Chaitanya, as you well know, is Radha and Krishna in one body. And so, he shows us Vrindavan. He shows us the highest spiritual existence. For all of you who are looking for something higher, looking for something more, thinking that this is 
material or this is some kind of crazy philosophy try to imagine something higher what's higher than ultimate ecstasy and bliss and your eternal position and relationship amongst the supreme person there's nothing higher if you're thinking of something higher then you're just creating complications in the mind it says in the six shastakam it says in the six shastakam uh, where is it oh son of Maharaj Nand I am your eternal servitor, yet somehow or other I have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. One of the atoms at your lotus feet. So, achintya bera bera. We are a piece of Krishna. We are a very small piece. That's why it says to chant and think of yourself as humble as a blade of grass. Because when you think of yourself as that blade of grass, just reaching up at the sun, trying to get light for the first time in your young grass life, then you can actually see and feel your position and feel the beauty of our position as children, babies, as newborns, just breathing the fresh air of existence for the first time and realizing our position. There's nothing greater than that. And you can only do it, like it says here, if you think of yourself lower than a blade of grass. So our work has to be always to work that into our understanding of thinking of ourselves as, as lower than a blade of grass. A blade of grass or just a small atom on the lotus feet of Krishna. forever blooming lotus feet which are carrying the support of the whole spiritual kingdom upon its lotus flowers see this Vishnu is supported on a lotus flower a blooming flower because there is nothing underneath Vishnu except this flower that is the lotus feet of Vishnu of which we are an atom on upon This lotus flower is always blooming. There's always a new lotus flower being bloomed up from beneath. It's a perpetual bloom. Lotus feet because we are just babies. not even a small atom upon his feet. There are much more evolved souls that are carrying a higher position. But we can't even begin to imagine the towering pillar of the Father All we can do is barely imagine the base of the pillar. But since it's all holographic, 
The whole pillar is within each part. Krishna is everywhere. Nowhere is there not Krishna in the form of Kshinodakshi Vishnu. This is the super soul right here. In the heart of everything. In the heart of every entity. In the heart of every stone. In the heart of every planet. In the heart of every person, animal, vegetable, mineral. Is this budding lotus. Ooh. Drop my microphone there. Is this budding lotus with the piece of Vrindavan and Dom in it, albeit a material piece? Krishna says that Nangan or Vrindavan can be as large as the three worlds or it can be as small as my mother's lap. So Krishna says, Nanagon can be as large as the three worlds or as small as my mother's lap. Because a subject is followed by its predicate and not the other way around. First is the prime cause of causes. Then is everything else manifested by his expansions and his shaktis. His expansions in the form of Shankarshan produces the living entities. His expansions in the form of Ananta Shesha produces the living world which supports the living entities. His expansion in the form of Sri Lakshmi produces all the and, and Yoga Maya produces all the munificence, all the variety in the material world, but it's all expansions of the original thing. And that is why that the potency is so concentrated and so dense, so nectarian, so full of nectar. Just That's why that they say that it says in the Sri Titanya Charitamrita that the conception of oneness with the Absolute, if multiplied tens of millions of times, could not equal a single drop in the nectar that is servitude to Krishna. That is the ocean of nectar that is servitude to Krishna. So something like this. Because it's so concentrated. All of the spiritual world, or excuse me, all of the material world is flung out to the periphery of existence and it loses its concentration. But in the very core, the one that's doing the flinging is never, ever at a loss of its potency because it's so potent omnipotent all powerful it never loses its potency and so that is what you are tasting in sankirtan that is what we what we call a stage of ruchi ruchi r u c i that is tasting that nectarian delight of Vrindavan so powerful that just a drop of that nectar is enough to liberate the living entities And like it says again in the Shishik Shastakam, your holy name can render benediction to all living beings. Your, it can render all benediction to living beings. Thus you have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna and Govinda. In these transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental in the uh, yeah, excuse me. In this trans in these transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental energies. O oh Lord, out of kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by your names. But I am so unfortunate that I have no attraction for them. You know, he's saying that kind of tongue-in-cheek there. And it says in the very beginning, 
Chetu Darpana Marjanam Bhavma Tavagni Nirvapanam Shreya Kairava Chandika Vitaranam Vidya Vadhu Jivanam Anandam Buddhi Vardhanam Pratipadam Pranamrita Shwadam Shwadanam Sarvatma Shnanva Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam Glory to the Shri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death. The Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity because it's at large, because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge, that condensed substance of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and enables us to taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. The benediction moon. So it says elsewhere in, I forget which Gaudiya book, but it says that that thing which is the moon that sphere is the same thing which is the sun and the same thing which is all the stars. It's just in a different position as the sun and, and all the stars. But it's essentially the same one thing. The moon. And when we look up at the stars, we see many, many stars in the background. But there's one, one moon bright as ever, glowing and effulgent and spreading its rays upon the earth. So all throughout the cosmos, that prime substance is spreading its rays like the moon. If there's any like questions that you guys have, questions, let me know. Just type it right there in the in the uh, chat room. Questions about anything I'm talking about, or questions about Gaudiya Vaishnavism. I'd like to get some interaction going on these things. <laughs> So now we can kind of see why Sankirtan is so special. It brings us back into the direct communion with that primal Lord, Govinda and Radha. It brings us into communion as the gopis, back as the gopis, our original constitutional position, the lovers of the darling of Raj. And the tasters of that sweet, sweet nectarian music of his flute, and primordial blissful vibrations. His flute is so transcendental that as he's playing it, the nectar from his lips is carried in the sound. And we feel it vibrating through our bodies. trying to get in here. Mm -mm.
And all we need to do is to think Krishna, think, think, think. Krishna, 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 Krishna. Gopi, 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 Gopi. Radha, 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 Radha. Because it's all in that name. Swami, uh, Triparari Swami said in, in his book that essentially all, all words refer to God because God is the prime cause of causes. All words refer to Him essentially. Different expansions, different energies, different aspects, but they all refer to the prime cause of causes because everything is a hologram of that. <sighs> and so certain Sanskrit words these are transcendentally invested by Krishna with the whole holographic truth Friggin' puppy. <laughs> These words are holographic. They're not just normal words. Oh, I'm sorry, there's some, uh... questions here. Vrindavan, yeah. Vrindavan is the name of that primordial forest. So just how everything is a movement in between above and below. So what we have essentially manifested here, like I said, is the hologram of the whole thing. Hologram of the whole. Uh, because it is an emanation of the primordial cause of causes. Vrindavan is a forest. Because if you look on our planet, on any natural scenery, you'll find, you know, fields, lakes. But all over the place you'll find forest. So Vrindavan is a primordial forest abode of Radha and Krishna. The primordial forest abode of the primordial person and the primordial lover. The pleasure potency. Ladini Shakti. Radha is the pleasure potency. Ladini Shakti. And all the gopis, all the devotees of Krishna are expansions of Radha. Just like the jivas are expansions of Lord Shankarshan. When the jivas become devotees, become expansions of Radha. Can I describe wearing tilaka? Well, I mean, tilaka, when you, you know, just go and take a shower in the morning and put on tilaka and chant your rounds, it just feels amazing. I can't, can't even put it into words. You know, it's really weird is that like before I even knew what a tilaka was, I was having this really weird uh, vision behind my eyes I was seeing this this uh, this blue like shape it was the weirdest thing I was seeing this blue shape and I can see it now when I close my eyes I swear and this blue shape was shaped just like a tilaka I actually drew it out and put it on uh, my Facebook is this it is this like spherical kind of oval like shape and then above and I saw the two prongs coming out above it and it's, it was a tilaka and I didn't know what the hell it was I, I was calling it what was I calling it the horned horned goddess or something like this I was calling it some pagan term and then uh, it turns out that it's it was a tilaka and so uh, when you mark your body with the 12 tilaka points you're indicating it as the house of Vishnu. Of 
course, Vishnu is in the mode of goodness. He's not in the mode of destruction or in the mode of creation. He's in the mode of preservation. He's in the eternal mode, which is not created or destroyed. So you're, you're aligning yourself to that eternal mode. And you're also, when you put them on, you, you're, you vibrate certain mantras for the face. It's Om Gishavya Nama, and then belly is Om Narayan Nama. So it's a bit like Western occultism where you're doing you know invocations of the various names of God. Um, but you're painting your body and cementing those invocations. And I'm sure that it has a hell of a lot to do with, with uh, drawing Shakti to your body because I feel a lot of Shakti. When I put them on, when I put them on, I feel all kinds of Shakti and it really helps my Japa quite a bit. So, Tilaga is wonderful. <laughs> yes. Radha is beautiful with big moon like eyes and enchants Krishna in a moon like face. She's the one who understands Krishna the deepest. And although Krishna plays his flute and everybody hears it, he plays his flute specifically for Radha. Everyone hears him play, but he plays especially for Radha. Everyone goes to Krishna but Krishna goes to Radha. Remember, his intimate friends and lovers, they are expansions of Radha. Radha is the primordial relation to Krishna as his pleasure-giving energy. And don't get a naughty mind there. <laughs> Even in the Kabbalistic doctrine, if you go to Ari Films on YouTube, the Kabbalistic uh, guru will tell you that we are there to give pleasure to the deity. That's our role, that's our function. We are expansions of the Ladini Shakti as well as Jivas. Krishna, the name Krishna means he who attracts everyone, who attracts the minds of everybody. Yet Radha attracts him. Krishna attracts everybody. Radha attracts him. Creation is built up. Moves in a dance. A lotus dance. Between Krishna and Radha. And then Krishna goes away and Radha experiences a separation. As Krishna goes and tends to the world, he is the king after all. And what's the king's function? Protect the kingdom? To show the path? and to make sure everybody is happy. So in order to do this, occasionally he has to leave Radha. Radha knows this. But she doesn't own him. Even though Krishna loves her more than anything.
She doesn't own him. So, he goes and ministers, administers to the creation. Well, he has Brahma doing the actual creation part, but he ministers to the preservation. Just like a king is engaged in preserving the society, or well, should, should be engaged in preserving the society. Radha is Tladini Shakti. The pleasure giving potency. She's an energy of which we are all a part. All of the devotees like I said, our expansions of Radha. It's okay. No problem. So, when I'm speaking cryptically, when I'm speaking cryptically and saying that Krishna knows that, or excuse me, Radha knows that Krishna loves him, I'm saying that the devotees of God, to spell it out very plainly, the devotees of God collectively make up Radha. So God is intimately in love with his friends, and even more so with his lover, Radha, who is the height of devotion to Krishna, who knows him more than anybody who experiences him more than anybody. She's the acme of the experienced. And Krishna is the experiencer. She is the enjoyed. And Krishna is the enjoyer. She is the energy, the beginning of the energy, fountainhead of all Shakti. And Krishna is the energetic. So you have to understand this through a chintya beda beda. You have to understand this with the understanding of simultaneous oneness and difference between Krishna and his energies and his expansions. Simultaneous oneness and difference. We are a movement. We can change positions. And we're all one and separate simultaneously. So although it's presumptuous to think of yourself as Radha, we are aspiring to be like gopis. And in Vrindavan, you can become a gopi. You can become a gopi, a maidservant of Krishna. One of his dancing partners in pastimes of pleasure and love. That Shakti is coming from the cause of causes, from the original absolute reality which is not some vague and impersonal thing but is a hologram of our own self rather we are a hologram of it a hologram contains the whole in the itty bitty pieces Krishna 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 <laughs> hologram contains the whole in all of the pieces so we're a hologram of Vrindavan Dham. We're a hologram of Vrindavan, of the celestial forest abode of Krishna, Radha, and the gopis. Our self is a hologram of that. We contain 
an image of the whole within ourselves. Because like it says in the Sri Isopanishad, Ishopanishad invocation. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the exact words. That superior Godhead is not some vague and personal thing. These energies and these feelings, are they impersonal? Is this ecstasy? Is this bhav? Is it something foreign? No, it's very, fam very familiar. It's very comfortable. It's very personal. What is the position of your eternal soul? Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, that word Chaitanya Charitamrita means the eternal position of the living force in immortality. Chaitanya Charitamrita, the position of the living force in immortality. What is that position? What could it possibly be? Well, what, do you, what would you like it to be? Would you like it to be sadness? Would you like it to be fear? Would you like it to be hatred? Would you like it to be anger? in uh, some of Prabhupada's books which say that a subject is followed by its predicate. A predicate it follows the subject. In other words, the manifestation arises out of the manifestor. Arrives, the manifestation which we see arises out of the cause of causes, the originator. The above is first and the below is next. The below receives energies from above. And vice versa, as that happens, there builds up this motion and movement in between the below and the above. And the beloved, below and the above have reciprocation. And this is the reciprocation of Radha and Krishna's love. From the below and the above. So when we feel that energy... We're entering into a reciprocation with the absolute truth, with the karana karanam, the prime cause of causes, Ishvar, the supreme, superior Godhead. Shakti Padsir 2. Okay, I better stop that now or we're never going to stop. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to start losing people and start passing out. Oh, my goodness. So that Shakti that you can feel, that Shakti that's coming off of those sacred words, Hari, Krishna, Radhi, that Shakti which is vibrating and pulsing between us now, it's not coming from me. It's not coming from you. Where is it coming from? Where is that Shakti arising from? What am I? Who am I? Where am I? <laughs> Quick. The Sri Ishopanishad invocation states, The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete. And because he is completely perfect, all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped and complete wholes. What is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself because he is the complete whole. Even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains in the complete balance. So when you feel that ecstasy, that love, it's because we are feeling the holographic equivalent of Rindav and Dham, the holographic equivalent of the love between Krishna and Radha. because we partake of that holographic nature and it works from above to below and not the other way although there is a movement which goes that way the origination is above the cause of causes is above there's a wonderful verse in 